stopping by the obviously authentic channel. My name's Leah, that's spelled L-E-A and not L-E-A-H. So I just wanted to give my brief thoughts about Bell Collective. I'm not reviewing the show, but I think the show is doing pretty good so far. It's kind of like a mix between Married to Medicine and um, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I like the way, like, the way it's going. But I saw that there was controversy about the last episode and I watched Scotty by Nature TV's review, Jamie That's Me TV review, Rodney's, Ashley Miller's, and Color Me Pink's, and I'm patiently waiting on Miss um, Erica De Niro's T uh, review. Um, but those five reviews, you should all, you should definitely check out those six people I just named. Um, they all had like different opinions about the situation. Um, the most one I agree with was Jamie, that's me. And that y'all need to check that out because that video is funny. She reenacted the fight and it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Um, but I just want to give my thoughts. I don't plan on reviewing the show, but I have just a different opinion than what I saw online. And I just wanted to talk about it. So um, first off, there's Tambra. I like Tambra, but Tambra's voice, her wardrobe, that makeup is a, and that hair is a lot. She seems like a really sweet lady. I also think she lying about her age because Tamara give me a smooth 45. And I think if Tamara wants to have children, she should have children. But she also needs to understand the longer you wait to have kids, the harder it will be for you to relate, in a sense, in my opinion, to those kids. Like Kenya Moore just turned 50. And I think Brooklyn, her daughter, is like maybe three I'm not totally sure how old she is. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong about having kids when you're older. But I feel like as you get older, those older years should be your years to like relax and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Not to run around taking care of a kid. Just like I and I also think that like the longer you wait, we all know the more complicated it is for women and the more um, danger you're putting yourself in. And like they always say, having a baby is the closest you can get to death. And we and we know as black women, we normally die. So I definitely think if she wants to have children, she should have them. Um, but I also think the reason why maybe her, uh, let me turn this off. Her um, career hasn't really popped off. I really think it's her voice. I thought her voice was just a radio voice, but that seems to really be her voice. And it's like nails on the chalkboard. And I think the issue is Tamara needs to put a little bit of bass in her voice because she has the personality, but her voice is not listener friendly. Like I could not listen to a podcast of Tamara's voice, let alone her on the radio. Like her voice would probably get on my nerves. And I think that's what's hindering her from possibly like up, like upgrading because I don't know if like her voice would be real well received if she was hosting like the BET Awards or let's say like the Grammys or like the E Choice Awards, like when you see these people on the red carpets and stuff. So I I don't know. But she cool. Um she kind of boring, but I think you need a balance of boring with a lot of ratchet and a lot of extra. Then there is Letitia. She's cool. I like her concept of like buying back the street. I think it's important that black people, we buy back our old streets or at least invest in our old streets. Like our ancestors and our relatives, those were their streets. And I feel like you go to so many towns in the South where it's worn down or it's not like, yeah, it's just worn down. And it shouldn't be that way because those were our places, our safe havens. So I feel like we should um, definitely invest in that. So I hope it works for her. There is something about her that just seems a little disingenuous. Like, I don't know if we're seeing like the real her or someone putting on. Because when she was at the um, museum, it kind of felt like a show. Like she was just acting. And then when she cried last episode with the councilman, it kind of felt like she was acting to me too. So I don't know if she's just like heightening her like response to things. I just, I don't know. But I am like extremely proud of her for having this goal and wanting to accomplishment and actually putting words, um, action to her actions to her words. Then there's Latrice. I think Latrice is cool. Um, I like the fact that 
she is she's done way more with the whole like i have a weave business like in the days and age of like love and hip-hop where we know everybody be selling hair she's put a spin on it in the sense of like she's actually made it a company she's out here with these vending machines and like i don't know if i've seen her vending machines but i've been in the apart like i was gonna say an apartment but i've been in um malls and things of that nature where i've seen vending machines with weave and they're like almost out i've seen vending machines with like um lashes nails and stuff so it's a wonderful concept and i'm glad that she was afforded that opportunity to grow and succeed and i like the fact that she's like about her business and i also like the fact that she has like a salon and you can come and look at the hair and you could also get it installed and that she's trying to transition into hair care so she's really trying to create like a, a a empire and i think that's cool her home is beautiful her husband is questionable he seems very controlling but hopefully after watching this they like they see things about themselves and they build upon it because it does seem like he genuinely loves her so i hope they can figure out what it, whatever that is because cliff be doing a lot cliff does a lot but she seemed to love cliff so hopefully they figure it out um, then you have Antoinette. I made this video because of Antoinette because I don't like the response that people are giving her based off of the whole Kaylon and Marie situation. There's so many people that are like side eyeing her, like why is she friends with this white lady and all this other stuff. And I get people's concerns. I totally get people's concerns. But I think I see it differently because I'm a person that's in academia and I'm I'm in school right now. Like I'm in professional school and it is in the medical field. Um, it's not her field, but it has something to do with animal health. And I feel like us as black people, sometimes we contradict ourselves when we say we want people to we want people to showcase or shows to showcase the different arrays of black people and then when we do get showcased the different arrays of black people we belittle them and we demean them just in the sense of candace y'all was coming at her neck about her mama like per, per, like having that house and it's like that's generational wealth there's so many kids i know especially where i grew up that are still living with their parents or their parents are paying for their apartments or their homes and that's just normal because that's where we came from so i feel like we say we want to see different things but then when we get show when people show us different things we other it or we demean it and i don't think that's fair like i know what it's like to be the only person in the classroom that looks like me and everybody else doesn't like the area that I grew up in, like I grew up in the DMV area, um, mainly Northern Virginia. Uh, and the area I was in, um, Haymarket, Virginia, is like a very like mixed suburban area, but it's predominantly white. But there is a sprinkle of black people, Asian people, um, Indian, Middle Eastern, African. Like it's an array of people, but the majority of people in my high school was white but i met a lot of different people i've made friendships with a lot of different people from different countries and different backgrounds and i think going to that high school made me who i am today along with my parents and things of that nature but experience different race racial experiences and meeting people who have different backgrounds as me like my experience as a black woman is not the same as someone who's like vietnamese or someone who's an african immigrant and they're a first generation or someone who's latin in their first generation or they're not like my their experience is different from mine and my experience is different from theirs but i like i said i do know what it feels like when she mentioned like i was one of four black people in my perfect and like in professional school that is what's common it's not that many of us in professional school so i've seen people say well she act white or she want to be around the whites and i'm like that's what she was around if that's what you, if that's all you're around 24 7 that is what you become accustomed to so her being friends with Kaylon is not something that i would be like oh girl is i mean now with this uh, situation happening she probably really needs to reevaluate it but to me you how do i say this when you're the only one of you 
and people already have stereotypes about you like she said affirmative action it's so many people i had people told me i got into school because of affirmative action i've had people say that to me white people have said that to me like like and it's like no bro i got in because my credentials are the same as you if not more because i have to prove myself in order to let these people know i'm not to be played with and i came here to do what i came here to do just like you came here to do what you came here to do and i came here to succeed so that i made sh i came here to succeed to make sure that like the people behind me can come in here and succeed and do just as well and I think that is what Antoinette has carried on her back. I also think it's like when you're the only person that looks like you, you sometimes feel like Shh, I'm the representative of my people, even though everybody else is not does not have that same feeling. It sometimes feels like black people. We have that feeling like I have to be the good black one because they already have this negative perception of me. So I have to be the good one. And I think that is what her life has mainly been. I also think there's more to her story about her husband than she is telling us. I saw a comment on Color Me Pink's channel that I agreed with where the lady said maybe where she was up north, there wasn't as much racial tension put on her on her marriage. And then when she moved to Mississippi, it's like there's a clear cut and dry line of whites, blacks. So she probably it probably really did pressure put pressure on her relationship and it probably showed the cracks in her relationships where she didn't think there was and it could and there could be also be could be more and i think she probably has had to reevaluate herself and then and then think things about herself getting out of a divorce probably will open your eyes up to a lot of things that you didn't know about yourself a, a, a dissolution of any long-term relationship will always make you rethink about who you are and what you bring to the table and how you present yourself and how you show up in the world. And then there's Marie. I'm going to just let y'all right know right now, I don't like Marie. I do not like Marie, but I'm, I'm going to be very objective and fair in my opinion about the brunch fight and about well like about her situation i think marie is dumb i think marie is dumb and i also think marie overcompensates for her situation and it shows up in her son and it shows up in her the way she presents herself to the world and to the women uh, on this cast her constantly saying i'm a boss i'm a millionaire i'm this and i'm that is an overcomp over an overcompensation of how she feels about herself in the last episode, we heard about her um, situation with her mother and how everything changed once her mom got on drugs when she was like, I think she said eight or nine years old. I feel really bad for her because I, I really feel like that made her feel unloved and unwanted and made her probably feel like there was something wrong with me. Like, why are drugs so much more important to you? Why did you leave me? And I want Marie to know. That was your mom's issue, but you but you weren't the issue. Your mom had issues that she needed to get us uh, get settled and she used drugs to hide all of that. But that's not your issue. And you did you're doing what your mom did to you but in the reverse. And when I say that it's your mom pushed you to the to the side, which is the extreme of what she was dealing with. You are doing the extreme of over loving your child to the point where you did not set boundaries or discipline him in the manner in which he should have to be an upstanding citizen and not a terror to society. Your son is a black man in America. Okay. The way he acted punching in holes and walls was ridiculous and it was disgusting. The fact that he disrespected you in that way, I guarantee you, he probably done put hands on them baby mamas. Because, and I feel bad that her son, the her youngest, or one of her kids had to slide in between. Because that had to be hard for him to have to protect his mom from his older brother. And he's probably, his view of his, mom, of his older brother and his mom has probably changed for the worse. And he probably like like they probably need to put him in therapy to make sure like he's OK, because the fact that you didn't call the police. And I know the like us, we have a horrible relationship with the police, but he needs consequences. Like 
He is 21 years old with three kids under the age of one. That is ridiculous. And that also shows a lack of self-worth in your son. Your son is, is, uh, is a deadbeat. And he is an asshole. For him to go out there and just procreate in the year of 2020 or 2021 without a condom is sad and it's disgusting. Well, we know super gonorrhea is rampant on every college campus because it's a lot of y'all out here, male and female, and the people who are genderless or people in the middle of genders, people in general are just out here just being fast and loose with their bodies. I'm not saying be celibate. I'm not saying go out there and enjoy yourself, but I'm saying protect yourself, protect your mind, and definitely protect your body because there's a lot of people out here like Marie's son who don't give a damn about theirs and who will infect you and who will leave you stranded with a child and then move three hours away to go to school, probably having sex with them girls. Probably got He probably got kids he don't know about getting pregnant or probably girls who got pregnant but had the, the right decision to take care of it and go on about their lives because they saw in him that he ain't no good. Marie, you need to get a handle on that. He need to get a handle on that. He, all them videos of black people being killed by the police should have woke him up. To have that much anger to punch you on walls, to cuss out your mama, I know for a fact that you are nasty and disrespectful to the women out there in the streets. And two things are going to happen. Either somebody's going to kill you, kill him, or someone, or he's going to kill someone. There was just an article I just read a few days, a horrible article about a young man who was 22 years old. Uh, uh, I think he, their family was, they were immigrants that killed his mom because his mom told him she wanted him out the house or he needed to get a job. And he felt like he had every right to take his mom's life because he ain't like the fact that she told him to get out. And, that's, and that should let you know there was no boundaries in that home. And Marie, there's no boundaries in your home. That boy knows that he can go out here, spread it low and spread it wide, and populate with any and everybody he wants. Any and everybody he wants. Just because you are taking care of them kids. And this whole thing, like, I'm a millionaire, you're not a millionaire, sweetie. You may be a millionaire, like, on paper, but... In your home and in your space, you're not. You're you're not. Because your house and your house is in disarray. And it's sad because don't nobody deserve that. Even though I don't really like you, Marie, you do not you don't deserve the treatment that your son gives you. Because it because you I can tell you love him, but I don't think you know how to love him. And that's because your mom didn't teach you how to love yourself. In my opinion, your parent not in my opinion, it, it is your parents' job to teach you how to love yourself. It's, it's your parents' job to teach you how to love yourself, how to be loved, and how to love and respect others. And Marie, you didn't teach him that. You just, anytime he wanted something, you just shelled out money and you created something that is just sad. And should, and like, and like, I, it's the whole thing about like, She's creating a legacy with this mental health facility, and that's good for her. I think what she's doing for, for the community in Mississippi is wonderful, especially the black community, because we need mental health help. But the issue with Miss Marie is, is that she needs help as well, because you can't be out here giving out mental health advice and things of that nature, and your son is out here causing more, more like, what's it called? More patience for you. Because I guarantee you them, them girls is going through it. And he need, he needs to be in therapy. And that therapy session was trash because that man did not touch upon upon like him having three kids under the age of one and being 21. Like, oh, the therapy session aggravated me because it was it was doo doo. It was trash. So let's fast forward to the brunch situation. Miss Kayline, Miss Woman. I got why you were upset and I got why you were uncomfortable. I think, I don't know if the brunch situation was presented to Antoinette as like, oh, we're just going to be talking about the community and Ferris Street. And that's why she inv invited um, Kaylon, her white friend, or if she did tell him it was a black women's empowerment event. Either way, I... It, it was just awkward. Their affirmations were awkward. They shouldn't have said, I'm a strong black woman. They should, once they saw Kaylon and that alderman there, 
excuse me, the council alderman there, they should have switched it up to like, I'm a strong person to fit who was there. That's just my thoughts. When the conversation kept going and they started talking about, um, started talking about race you could visibly see that Kaylon was uncomfortable and i saw on twitter that people are like she don't look like she interested i said no she looked uncomfortable because if we later on we find out that her and Antoinette have had these discussions but it's different when you have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with someone that you considered a friend and that you probably have been vulnerable with versus like a room of black women that like you don't really know and you hear like some really jacked up and messed up stories about their experience in Mississippi where you feel like the grass is green and everything is cool. More than anything, I think Kaylon probably voted for Trump. Like she give me that. She give me undercover racist or a lady that because she don't say the N word and she don't be like she don't she don't say the N word. And she got a black friend or a few black friends. She don't think she racist. But ma'am, you you have, I, I don't, I'm not going to call you racist, but I can tell you probably have some strong prejudices against people. And you saying that you're Jeffrey Davis's granddaughter. People were saying that Jeffrey Davis was a, either a Confederate president or he was in, he led, he helped lead the succession um, of the Southern states from the union. And he was a slave owner. So you know what slavery is. And I'm I that whole her whole thing is like, you know, that stuff happened in the 50s and 60s. No, lady, it's still happening. Just because you don't see it with your own eyes does not mean it's not happening. And you probably have seen it with your own eyes, but you're so used to being in your own like perfect little white bubble. You probably didn't understand. Or no, you understand, but it probably if it don't affect you. Or like they're saying, if it if it doesn't affect you, let it fly. It does. That's what your mindset. So probably hearing all of that probably did bother you. It probably made you feel like, oh my god, like they think we hate them and we don't. But you acting oblivious was stupid. Um, I saw people were upset about the women going out there to see if she was okay. I didn't think there was nothing wrong with it. I think Antoinette going out there was okay. Like that's your friend. You brought her here. Like you should go out there and check her, check on her to see if she was all right. Um. Tambra and Letitia going out there I thought that was a bit much I did like when the lady I think her name is Mel came out there and what she said I think was was fact she said these are these the women's experience like we need to have these conversations we do these conversations are uncomfortable like they're they are very uncomfortable for both parties involved and I think that had they allowed Kaylon to talk somebody could have educated her and we could have then been like and kept it pushing but I think Marie hand I not Marie. I think Antoinette handles Kaylon with kid gloves, but I think this situation is probably going to force her to actually speak her mind in peace. Even though she says Kaylon is her best friend, she's probably not her best friend. We know how these TV friendships go. We just found out that Robin and Giselle only been friends for like three or four years since um Real Housewives of Potomac has been on. So and we thought everyone thought they were best friends. So she might not even be her best friend. They just might be like friends. And when she moved to Mississippi, they just continued their friendship. But I think this situation will probably force Antoinette to have to take the kid gloves off and actually have a real, real conversation with her if she wants to continue that friendship with her. Now, when Kayline came back in and she was talking her piece, I thought the way Marie interjected, I got where Marie was coming from. I really did. But I think Marie's delivery was garbage. Like she came off mad aggressive and like she it seemed like she wanted to punk that lady. And I didn't like that. Like I got what you were saying. Like, girl, this is not about you because Kayline made it about her. When Kayline made that comment of like, oh, she wants a moment. No, Kayline, you wanted a moment because you got up crying and walked out like you made that your moment. So the same thing you said to Marie, you can put that back on you. And the whole like, oh, she thinks I'm attacking her. Girl, that was a bit much. And I ain't like that. But Marie, you was doing a lot. Like you didn't have like if you wanted to, you should have just been like, hey, I get where you coming from. But maybe we can table this conversation and then um, let Letitia say what she has to say and then come back to it. But then Essie, Essie got on my nerves because Essie being that close to that lady, like I would have felt, I would have been defensive as hell too, like Kaylon. Like, don't roll up on me and we not cool like that. And she was like, you being disrespect? No, shut up. Like, 
Yes, like, sh no, like, back up, like, back, back. Like, back all the way back, lady. I don't know you. We not cool like that. Get out of my face and get out of my personal bubble, lady. Get out of it. Like, Antoinette was trying to explain, and they should have gave her the opportunity to explain. And then they should have let Kaylon talk. The reason why I was like, Marie and um essie did the most is because i've been in conversations where i've been the only black person and we've talked about race and when people try to cut in you feel ganged up on and you feel like people are trying to dismiss your experience and i felt like that's what they were trying to do although i feel like Kay what kaylon was saying was total bs and garbage they still should have allowed her to have that opportunity when you're the only person in there and you already like you only got one friend with you and everybody else is looking at you and like kaylon made herself a target by getting up and crying and and doing all of that like she's not a victim but she made herself a target like I just did not like the way Essie and Marie came at her. I just felt like they put 20 on 10 for no reason, in my opinion. Like, if Letitia didn't say nothing, because the brunch was Letitia. Letitia should have been at the hostess and said something, but she didn't. And then when, when they were arguing back and forth, what I didn't like is when Marie want to all of a sudden be like, she talking to me real disrespectful, like... Like, you coming at her disrespectful. Like, if you can dish it, you need to be able to take it. Whether that person is white, black, purple, blue, or whatever. Like, you came at that, you came at her. So, she had every right to come back at you. Now, after that, like, yeah, there was some racial undertones. But the whole when Marie was like, I ain't, this ain't the 60s and 50s when the girl said, come here. Girl, you told her she need to make my, my name taste like S like S-H-I-T in her mouth. Like, you basically told the lady to, sh and, like, to shut up and keep her mouth closed. And Kayline, like, Kayline stepped to the plate. The energy you was giving, she gave you. And she said, come here, like, girl, run up then. Make me. Make me. And I was with Kayline. Like, girl, don't, don't try to punk me. Like, don't try to, you thought you was going to punk the white lady. And the white lady came back at you. And then you got angry. And I was like, that's what, that didn't make no sense to me. Like, you can't be with it. And then when somebody brings it to you, now it's a whole racial thing. Granted, the undertones that Kaylon was saying was, was out, like, I, I felt it. I ain't gonna lie, I felt it. But I feel like the situation could have been handled totally different on both sides. Like, Kaylon should have just sat there, like, sat there and ate her food and, like, took it in. <laughs> allowed them ladies to speak on their experience because what they were saying was facts and was true and marie should have allowed kaylon to say what she had to say and then that could have been that i'm hoping next episode it don't get worse because I, i'm sick of all this like i i do not want it to be like a whole racial episode like honestly real housewives turned me off showing the protests and the riots because like bro we went through this like that was already a traumatic enough and it was a lot like ugh. so i'm hoping they find like a happy medium and like like they can dead the situation but i don't think that's gonna be resolved and i already know people gonna still be hating on internet especially if they don't if she don't check kaylon the way that we think she should check kaylon and i'm just like girl i don't know but that was, those are my thoughts <sighs> But, like I always say, be bravely authentic because there's no point for you to be anybody else because you amazing. So, those are my thoughts on Bell Collective. It's a good show. Hope it gets a second season. Bye, y'all.